Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm at the Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge here with Michelle. Hello. Hey Cole. So today we're talking about the gopher tortoise, which was behind us before I went right into the burrow, so now it's not a camera shot. <laughs> uh, but thank God that uh, he got a bunch of uh, extra footage of the tortoise so we can put it on the screen since uh, he does not want to be on camera right now. <laughs> a little camera shy. So how long has this tortoise been here at the facility? So uh, the gopher tortoise we have here, he's one of our animal ambassadors. We've had him since about 2010, which is long before I started working here. But his story is based off of being collided with a vehicle, so a typical hit by a car. And we had to put some plates and screws in to fix his shell. And he was deemed non-releasable shortly after that due to the threatened species status of our gopher tortoises here in the state of Florida. So we've had him ever since, and he's currently our longest uh, ambassador that we've had here. So do you uh, bring him out for different like, education programs to teach people about gopher tortoises? Absolutely. Um, just because our gopher tortoises are still considered a threatened species here in the state of Florida, we like to bring them out. Uh, and Landlord is pretty easy, uh, easy going, great for kids, uh, great for the nursing homes. And so we're able to take him to almost every education event that we do. And he seems super gentle. He's just walking around, uh, going around on a feet, like no big deal. He's not afraid of people at all. Nope, he's been uh, doing this what feels like his whole life. So he is all about the education events and all about the people. And also, I do want to touch on the enclosure that we have behind us here. It is a huge enclosure for one tortoise. Uh, yeah, well, he does share it with um, another tortoise. Uh, so he's not out here today. But yeah, they do like to roam a lot. They love to dig a lot. So um, as you can see, they've got their burrows uh, that we've made some man-made ones so they wouldn't burrow out of their enclosure. Um, so they do need quite a bit of space when it's summertime. Uh, they do a lot of walking around, a lot of perimeter checks. <laughs> what adaptations does the gopher tortoise have to really help it dig? Because obviously I, I saw the they have some pretty strong looking front legs. They definitely do. They have some very muscular forelimbs and they've got um, some well adapted spikes that you can kind of see uh, closer to the tips of their hands where that just helps really grip into the sand. Uh, their best habitat is a soily, a very soily sandy habitat uh, to ease into digging into a, a big burrow. So they need some kind of softer soil in order to make that happen. Which is perfect down here in Florida because all of the ground is just mostly sand. Yep. Like yep. You can look at the ground right now and just bunch of sand. Yep, yep, makes it real easy. So they love to dig even in this habitat. So you'll see we have a lot of uh, bricks placed around the perimeters to prevent uh, more digging <laughs> than what he should be doing. He's coming back he's out coming right back now. Out. Now he wants to be on camera. <laughs> so where can these gopher tortoises be found out in the wild? Um, so gopher you mentioned Florida, sorry. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, they can be found, um, I think, in quite a few states. Every state is different. So uh, just because the gopher tortoise is threatened here in the state of Florida, um, it actually isn't considered threatened as far as I know in Alabama or Georgia. So it does depend geologically on that whole side of things. But um, for the most part in here, uh, in the state of Florida, they are just in um, some, like I said, open kind of, uh, sandy, soily areas. They don't really uh, need a whole lot of forest areas because um, they, they kind of focus more on digging. What kind of things, like you mentioned that they are threatened, what kind of things are threatening their populations? So one of the biggest thing um, is mycoplasmosis, which is an upper respiratory infection for gopher tortoises. Um, it's also for other turtles and tortoises as well, but it is very common. Gopher tortoises greet each other um, face to face or nose to nose. And that's um, exactly how that disease gets spread. And so if they're all living in a kind of community together, several boroughs, that is how that disease can quickly wipe out a whole little community. Um, there's of course your other typical issues, vehicle collisions and other diseases, um, but um, home building and a lot of uh, tourist related things, uh, if new shopping centers goes up, that can take away from their boroughs and their homes. So it's kind of all a mixture of all those things together. Do you guys get gopher tortoises here uh, rehabilitated pretty frequently or no? Uh, yeah, I would say not as often as some of um, our regular turtles, like our box turtles, uh, but we do see them probably as the second most common reptile that we have come in here. And yeah, what's the most common injury? Probably like a vehicle accident, I imagine? Yep, yeah, most of the time, um, if they don't come in with symptoms of the uh, mycoplasma disease, then it's usually injuries due to um, hit by car or being chewed on by uh, dogs. So some people, if they do have enough land, you know, they may or may not be aware that they have a gopher tortoise on their property. Um, and then a dog is just found chewing on the edge of, the, of the, the carapace, which is the top part of their shell. And so that may lead to some minor injuries that we can very easily treat and just get them back into the wild. And one thing I noticed on this tortoise I wanted to touch on is how smooth the shell is. Is that 
uh, usual for this gopher tortoise, or is it um, due to its, its age and being in captivity for a while? Yeah, for him, uh, it's definitely a combination of, of a lot of things. Uh, gopher tortoises constantly go in and out of their burrows, so that can cause some smoothing of their shell. Um, he's also definitely uh, older than than what we would naturally assume. We've had him for about 11 or 12 years. He was an adult when he got here. Um, so a lot of it is just a lot of wear and tear over the years. What kind of animals would try to eat a gopher tortoise? So there could be a lot of predatory species um, like your typical coyotes um, or foxes that might be interested in trying to, you know, get to him. Uh, they're not exactly the easiest prey item since they have their, their shell that gets in the way, um, but they can certainly, you know, get to appendages and things like that as well. And I heard this once that with a gopher tortoise in the state of Florida, you can't even think of touching the gopher tortoise. Like you can't help it across the road. You can't uh, move it out of the way of like a lawnmower or anything like that. Is that true? Uh, sort of. There's definitely a lot of red tape around gopher tortoises just due to the status that they have here in Florida. Uh, the first and foremost thing that I always tell people is if you have any questions, if there's one in your yard and you don't know if there's something you can do or can't do, go ahead and call Florida Fish and Wildlife. Uh, they'll be the ones that can legally uh, remove it if it has to be removed. Uh, but other than that, nope, you uh, can definitely get in trouble for harassing the gopher tortoise, um, purposely injuring it, or um, harming and destroying any of their burrows. They're all protected under state law. So let's say like, I'm going down the road and I see a gopher tortoise, like, I'm allowed to like, like motivate it out of the out of the road. Yeah, as long as I don't imagine. take it out of its like home range, right? And, or or bother it in any other way. There shouldn't be any issue. Um, you know, that's at least preventing it from possible vehicle collision. So, as long as you point uh, any turtle or tortoise, you know, in the same direction it was heading across the street, then everything should be fine. Um, you know, he'll I assume go back to where his burrow was, or he might have to cross the street again. But there shouldn't be too big of an issue with that. But if people, if you aren't a hundred percent sure, just leave it alone. Like, that's like the number one thing with all wildlife. If you don't know like, what it is or you don't know what to do with it, leave it alone. Exactly. Just call your state fish and game, you know, conservation commission, ours is Florida Fish and Wildlife, um, or call your local rehabber if you're concerned about it being in the middle of the road or if it has an injury or if you don't know if it's sick. Uh, some turtles like these guys can uh, have certain symptoms, so always call your local rehabber too. They can help get some uh, questions answered. And that's the entire reason that you guys are here, is uh, to help rehab animals. Yeah, absolutely. We've been doing it for, um, I think, 27 years now, uh, since 1994. Um, and we moved from being a kind of home rehabber base, so just working outside of a few people's homes, uh, to finally getting a facility located in Destin, Florida. Uh, to then we upgraded to an old kind of rundown fire department station uh, in Fort Walton Beach. And then finally, about two years ago, we moved out here to Navarre, Florida, where we're on uh, about two acres of land and we have a lot more space to uh, rehabilitate our wildlife and get them released back into the wild, as well as homes for some of our permanent residents, which are our animal ambassadors that we use for education events. And with the, the two acres here, we can give them awesome enclosures like this with plenty of space to walk around. And because uh, having a lot more space for the tortoises, it allows them to like, exercise and it's plenty of opportunity for enrichment as well. So this is good for all the other animals too. Exactly, exactly. That's our goal here is getting them the right food, the right habitat space, and enrichment every day just to keep that mental stimulation, especially for our ambassadors. I want to wrap up the video with a pretty tough question for you. What is your favorite thing about the gopher tortoise? I think my favorite thing about gopher tortoises is that they are very welcoming, um, and that's kind of how Landlord got his name. Uh, so gopher tortoises will use their burrows um, not just as a home for themselves, but as a home for I think about 360 other species, uh, if I'm correct on that number. So I think it's really cool that what they do out in nature doesn't just affect them. Uh, they're a keystone species. What they do out in nature um, kind of is a, a cascade effect for a lot of other species. So if gopher tortoises go away um, and they go extinct, then that can possibly cause the extinction of several other species in their wake. Because uh, whenever they're done with their burrows, other animals can definitely use it. So it's not just shelter for like them, as you said, it's shelter for plenty of other species, like 360, uh, over 360 species, like you said, that's insane. The amount yeah. of animals that can benefit from one species. Absolutely, yeah. So it, it's crazy, um, you know, how one animal just out in the wild can be helping another without even knowing it. Well, thank you so much for telling us about this uh, awesome tortoise species that we're going to have to dig out of that burrow here <laughs> in a couple minutes. But, uh, and thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and as always, I will see you next time.